All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome. I am uh, Pastor Aaron. I'm the worship pastor here at First Baptist Church of Palm Coast, and we are glad that you are here today for the uh, annual remembrance of the doc Dr. Martin Luther King service. And uh, to start our service today, uh, we're going to have uh, Miss Marie McRae to come and, and also welcome each and every one of you. Is Marie here? <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Is she here this morning, Marie? I'm sorry? Oh, they are? Okay. All right. Have no fear. We are professionals here, okay? <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I have a joke for you. How about that? Okay. A man and a woman were, uh, they decided to go on a little vacation, and uh, the husband decided he was going to get a rowboat. And uh, so, the, so the wife gets in the, in, in the boat, and she says, well, which oar do you want? And, uh, of course, he says, either or. Anyway. Yeah. You get it? Either or? Okay. All right. That's really bad. That's why I don't tell many jokes here at the church. <laughs> but I love them. All right. So do we have lift? We do. All right. So Miss Marie, welcome. We're glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you for sparing everybody else from my jokes. I appreciate that. <laughs> Well, we're going to get the rest of the uh, people that's on the program up here, and then we're going to get started. Just as soon as everyone is seated, we can get started. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s program, where we gather to honor the enduring legacy of a remarkable leader who dedicated his life to the pursuit of justice, equality, and peace. As we commemorate Dr. King's profound impact on civil rights, let us reflect on his inspirational words, particularly his eloquent 1964 Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize speech delivered in Oslo. In this iconic address, Dr. King eloquently articulated the urgent need for nonviolent resistance and the transformative power of love in overcoming the darkness of injustice. His message continues to resonate, challenging us to confront inequality and strive for a world 
where every individual is treated with dignity and respect. Today, as we come together to celebrate Dr. King's vision, may his words inspire us to foster compassion, understanding, and unity in our communities, echoing an enduring call for equality and justice that he championed throughout his remarkable life. And we'll get moving with our program. Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you to the First Baptist Church of Palm Coast. Uh, my name is Pastor Kevin uh, Lauder. I'm the lead pastor here at the First Baptist Church of Palm Coast uh, since 2016. It is our privilege and our honor to be the host site this year for uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, celebration for our community. And so today we welcome our visiting dignitaries, our, our sheriff, our, uh, those members of the uh, New York City retirees. Uh, Transit Authority retirees, and of course, uh, church members and community members, because today we're all one community coming together. And so allow me to open our uh, uh, celebration today with prayer. Join me in prayer. Father, we are so grateful today to be able to come to this place uh, to celebrate uh, the life and legacy of a man that you use greatly uh, in the life of this country and the life of so many. Father, today as we gather, uh, as we remember, as we are encouraged, and as we're challenged, Lord, may we take on the same attributes and characteristics uh, that you uh, have uh, desired for us to foster in our own relationships with each other and our relationship with you, as exemplified by Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Lord, I pray that today everything that is said and done in the next uh, several minutes, in the next hour, Lord, that it would bring honor and glory to you which is our primary focus and our primary concern of every day of our lives. We thank you, Lord Jesus. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, and we're going to sing Lift Every Voice and Sing. Thank you. 
You may be seated. I am tasked with the Old Testament reading, which will come from the book of Amos, the fifth chapter. I begin reading the 18th verse. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion, only to meet a bear as though he entered his house and rested his hands on the wall, only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light, pitch dark without a gray array of brightness? I hate, I despise your religious feast. I cannot stand your assemblies. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and crane offerings, I will not accept them. Though your choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your song. I will not listen to the music of your harps, but let justice roll down like a river, righteousness like a never-ending stream. The word of the Lord. The New Testament reading will come from the book of Galatians chapter 5 verses 1 and 13 through 15. Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. It is absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. Just make sure that you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy and destroy your freedom rather use your freedom to serve one another in love that's how freedom grows for anything we know about god's word is summed up in a single sentence love others as you love yourself That's an act of true freedom. If you bite and ravage each other, watch out. In no time at all, you will be annihilating each other. And where will your precious freedom be then? For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Freedom, equality, and dignity are bestowed upon all by virtue of being human, made in the image of God. In Galatians, the Apostle Paul reminds us that these rights are not earned, but divinely ordained. The word of God for the people of God. Our worship choir today is honored to be here and to be uh, contributing to the service. We're going to be doing uh, the first of two songs this morning. It's called Thine is the Kingdom, and it's an arrangement of the Lord's Prayer. I pray that it will bless you today.
choir for that beautiful rendition. This year, uh, our MLK committee has selected the Flagler Free Clinic as the recipient of the love offering or free will offering. Um, the Flagler Free Clinic is in Bunnell. Its um, director, executive director is Terry Belito. Is Terry's here? Can you, you stand? Okay, there she is back there. That's, okay. Okay. Let me tell you a little something about the Flagler Free Clinic. The Flagler Free Clinic was founded by Dr. John Kanakaris, Flagler County's first physician in the late 1940s, and Faith Coleman, an advanced registered nurse practitioner who had been diagnosed with cancer at a time when she was uninsured. Together, they established the Flagler Free Clinic in 2005. The Flagler Free Clinic is a volunteer-driven, nonprofit organization. They do not receive state or federal funds. They survive on fundraisers and contributions from organizations and individual donors like you to aid them in their mission to provide medical and dental care to the Flagler County community residents who are of limited income and are uninsured. Today, the clinic sees patients by appointment five days each week, a long way from its beginning when they were seeing only two Saturdays a month. Each year, the clinic provides over 2,000 patient appointments and has created a medical home environment. Each, pa each patient is assigned the primary provider who manages all aspects of the patient's care. Patients may receive blood work and other diagnostic tests at no cost. Access to specialists is provided in-house or by referral. The clinic services are made possible thanks to the efforts of over 60 community volunteers, private sector donors, and community partners. Their volunteer team includes primary care providers and specialists, nurses and administrative volunteers. The service that the clinic provides would not be possible without the dedicated volunteers. 96% of their revenue and support is utilized for patient services. So if you're donating by check, we ask that you please make your checks payable to the Flagler Free Clinic, and that's listed on the back of your program. So the ushers, if you would come up.
I'd like to ask that you join me in standing as we ask the Lord to bless the offering that has been given and to multiply it for the effective use in our community. Join me in prayer. Father, again, we come to you with our request made known. Lord, that this, uh, th these funds that were gathered today, that you would do the same as you did with the fishes and loaves. Lord, that you would take these, our meager offering, and expand them to answer the needs of many. Father, that you would, you would be able to, as we sow, that we would also be able to reap in this community the benefit of your love, the benefit of your presence. Lord, we thank you for the, uh, those that work with the Flagler County Free Clinic. We thank you for those that are directing there, all those that are volunteering there. Lord, they are performing a mighty ministry. And Lord, I pray that those that would go there would somehow understand that you love them and that you are providing for them even in this way. Father, use these offerings to bless others, to bless this community, and ultimately your kingdom. We love you, Jesus, and it's in your name I pray. All God's people said, amen. amen. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Joseph Matthews, and I've been uh, asked to uh, introduce our guest uh, speaker for this occasion. And she is the Judge Washington, currently serves the people of the Seventh Judicial Circuit as the administrative judge in Putnam County, Florida, and is currently assigned to the felony bench. She is the first African-American judge ever to serve in Putnam County. Judge Washington has been a licensed attorney in Florida and Texas for 26 years. She was born in Appalachia, Louisiana, and is the oldest of three children born to Charles a veteran of a uh, Vietnam military veteran, and Tong Son Richardson, a dual Korean and U.S. citizen and retired small business owner. Judge Washington received her bachelor's in political science from Louisiana State University. While attending LSU, she enlisted in the L Louisiana Army National Guard where she served as a combat field medic. She received her Juris Doctorate from uh, Thurgood Marshall School of Law at Texas Southern University. There she met her husband, Alfred Washington, Jr., who graduated from Tuskegee University and is now a junior partner with the firm of Rule Ziffler. Alfred is also the son of Duval County's beloved first appointed African-American judge, the late Alfred Washington, Sr. The Washingtons have been married for 26 years and have raised two wonderful, wonderfully inquisitive and bright young adults, Alfred A.J. Washington III, 19, and Aaliyah Joy Washington, 16. After 11 successful attempts to se secure a judicial appointment, Judge Alicia Washington was instead elected by the people to the bench in August of 2020, making her the first African American female circuit judge elected in the seventh judicial circuit, which consists of Volusia, St. John's, Flagler and Putnam counties. Judge Washington's personal and professional life embodies a commitment to continued growth and a recognition that using one's God-given gifts and talents in a manner that mainly meaningfully, excuse me, impacts your community is the highest form of citizenship. Judge Washington feels that serving as a circuit judge allows her to utilize what she has learned through her 26 years of legal practice. And more importantly, 
the life lessons she has learned over the past 53 years to assist those seeking justice, integrity, and fairness through our court systems. After the next musical selection, the next voice you will hear is our keynote speaker, the Honorable Alicia R. Washington. Thank you. Well, the song that we're going to sing now is a song that we did last month for our Christmas musical, and it tells the story of the birth of Christ through the resurrection, and it's a song that talks about the basic doctrines of the church, things that we all believe as, as Christians. You know, one of the great uh, uh, lines in it is, we proclaim that we believe, okay? We'll stand unashamed uh, before our God, and we will proclaim that, that we believe that Jesus Christ is sovereign Lord. Amen? One day every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior to the glory of God. Amen. I'm looking forward to that day when we will all be together in doing that. So I pray this song again will bless you this morning and make you think uh, about what we believe and, and that we believe in a, in a wonderful and merciful and mighty Savior. Amen. God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, we believe in His Son, the Lord Jesus, and His Holy Virgin birth. We believe in the Spirit. The
Sorry you have to listen to me after listening to that beautiful song. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, thank you, thank you. What a beautiful, beautiful selection. Thank you so much. All right. Well, good morning. Greetings. Uh, greetings from, I'm trying not to be nervous here, so just ignore me. Um, and I'm trying to make sure I can read the paper that I put in like 18 font, so bear with me. Um, Greetings from First Baptist Church of Bunnell, where I attend, and my pa pastor, Pastor Caleb Snyder. Uh, I've come to tell you that God is good. All and all the time. See, so that's universal. It doesn't matter where you go to church. That, that's the basic tenement of what we learn here. I feel extremely blessed to be here with all of you this morning. Uh, thank you to the New York City Transit Retirees of Palm Coast, Chapter 2, and its president, Marie McCray for spearheading the celebration. And thank you for Mrs. Thea Smith, their MLK chairperson, for being led to invite me to speak to all of you today. Thank you, Senior Pastor Kevin, as he likes to be called, <laughs> and First Baptist Church of Palm Coast for providing this beautiful space and this blessed opportunity. And last but not least, Thank you to all in attendance who have gathered here this morning to celebrate the life and legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The theme of this year's program is keeping the legacy with faith, love, and action. And it was interesting to me because I, I have to be honest with you, I had to look up the definition of the word ecumenical. I had never heard it, it was not something that I used. And so the focus of this program is trying to promote solving the world's problems through Christian unity and cooperation. Amen. That's the purpose. And, and that is so fitting for what Dr. King taught us. And it's so relevant for a lot of the challenges that we are facing today as Christians. So I'm honored to speak. See, you, we live in a world unfortunately, where it's much easier to hate and dismiss. It's so easy to make assumptions about people based on what they look like and where they live, what they like and what they don't like. But the work of getting to know a person, getting to understand and know their character, well, that's hard work. And you're only willing to do that work if you value that person as a human being worthy of your time, your understanding, and your compassion. That's the work that was the core of Dr. King's legacy, the love for his brothers and sisters in Christ. To understand and celebrate Dr. King, you have to understand the man behind the nonviolent, peaceful protest movement. You see, Dr. King was first and foremost a Christian. Of all of his titles, his awards, his accolades, the single most important title he held was as a child of God. If he were not, we would not be celebrating him today because he could not have accomplished all that he did without God leading his path. You see, Dr. King understood that when you are a Christian, you are to view all people as brothers and sisters in Christ. God commanded in John chapter 13, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Now as Christians, we know some of us are harder to love than others. 
And I, I don't know which side I'm on. I think it depends on who you're talking to. Um, my husband will probably say I straddle the line here and there. You know, 26 years is a long time. But when you think of the grace that God has shown us, how can we defy his command? When you accept someone as your brother and sister in Christ, you care about them. You genuinely care about them. You care about how they are treated, and they care about you. The legacy of Dr. King is that he held true to God's command, even when faced with the most vile hatred and visceral violence. But make no mistake, he, like us, were human. I imagine it took time and a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer. It took experiences, both positive and negative, to give Dr. King the discipline and fortitude he needed to continue to do as God commanded, to always answer hate with love. Dr. King said that the business of freedom and equality was the business of every person, not just the oppressed. His love for all humanity grew as he witnessed people of all cultures, colors, socioeconomic backgrounds stand with him against the injustices during the civil rights movement. He, along with all who followed, understood, as Dr. King famously wrote in his letter from the Birmingham jail, that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. As we celebrate his legacy here today, I can tell you it's no accident that Dr. King was irreverent. It takes a true Christian heart to look beyond one's own hurts to seek out the good in all people. By the time Dr. King gave his I Have a Dream speech, he had been a part of the American Civil Rights Movement for over a decade. In those years, he saw many people, his brothers and sisters in Christ, fighting side by side with him, for him, and for our children. That experience helped him to see the humanity of a person, and he was able to experience that warmth of knowing that a person did not have to look like him to be his brother or sister in Christ. Dr. King led first by faith, then by love, and love directed his action. It is very important to keep the legacy of Dr. King alive through our own faith, love, and action. Action doesn't mean that we all have to go out and march and protest. Everyone has their place in this struggle. Your faithful action could start with something as simple as being kind to someone who is not kind to you, to fight hatred with love and compassion. That changes hearts, and more importantly, it is what God calls us to do, to promote his message of love and grace. And I know many times the rewards are not evident and your actions seem fruitless, but your actions will be pleasing to God. If you do not see the change in them, pray for them. Pray that God does a mighty work in their heart and yours because you have to continue to evolve as well. Evolution is life. If you're not evolving, you're not changing, you're not living. I was telling Ms. Smith that as I started to pray on what message I was gonna deliver today, because I'm a big believer in when people invite you to speak, speak on something that the, it's port, is important to them, something that they wanna hear. If you don't do that, you don't get invited back to speak to these <laughs> events. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Um, but I was telling her that when I thought about it and I, and I reflected, I really was surprised at how what this day has meant to me over the years, how it's evolved. You know, when I was a little girl growing up in, in Louisiana, what Martin Luther King Day meant to me was it was largely a somber day. It was a largely a day that we thought about people who had lost their lives fighting for our freedoms. It was a day of sadness. It was a day of anger, you know? And then as I grew and I, as I started to live and I started to allow people into my life to, you know, allow myself to experience 
uh, the goodness of all people. And this never works. You know, I put glasses on and then things happen. I, I don't know. I, I think I'd be okay without the glasses, but then I couldn't see the, pe the paper. But anyway, um, now today, Dr. King's holiday has become a, for me a day of remembrance of all the sacrifices people of all races have made and continue to make to fight for the liberty of all people. Today I recognize that while there have been victories, freedom and liberty are lifelong pursuits. It's not stagnant. It's not permanent because people aren't stagnant. There will sadly never be a day here on earth that we must not always be vigilant. You know, I have two children now. That always happens, but okay, bear with me. It's okay, all right. <clears throat> you practice these speeches so that you can hide emotions and it just doesn't work, you know. <laughs> but when you're, you're in the house of the Lord, you have to be honest, you know. And I worry all the time Amen. about what their tomorrow is gonna look like, what their children's tomorrow is gonna look like. It sits with me all the time. And if I didn't have God, I wouldn't survive it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't survive it. So I share Dr. King's dream that my children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And I can tell you we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So, in closing, even though I'm disappointed in myself for not making it all the way through, in closing, <laughs> this day may mean something different to each one of you. That's okay. We all have different life experiences. We will all continue to grow and evolve through those experiences. But the fact that you are here means Dr. King's legacy means something to you. I pray that that something continues to evolve and grow and move us closer to a world filled with Christian love. Thank you so much and God bless each and every one of you. Well, we know that Judge Washington was speaking from her heart. That's why she was so emotional. Now, as we close, as we conclude this Martin Luther King Jr. program, let us carry the flame of Dr. King's vision into our daily lives. His powerful 1964 Nobel Peace Prize speech serves as a guiding beacon, urging us to be agents of change in the face of adversity. Just as he spoke of the fierce, fierce urgency of now, let us leave this gathering with a renewed commitment to stand against injustice and work tirelessly for a world where equality and compassion prevail. Dr. King's words echo in our hearts, reminding us that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. May we all play a part in bending that arc a little closer to justice in our time. So I'm thanking you for joining us in honoring the enduring legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr.
As we close our service today, I'd ask everybody to stand as we close with the, the very familiar and great song, We Shall Overcome. Ask the men to start as we begin the song. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall Father, we do again thank you for this time that we were able to spend together as one people, one community. Lord, reminding ourselves of the important work that you have for us today. Lord, a work that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood for, uh, lived for, and ultimately gave his life for. Father, that, that we, would, we would all overcome, that we would be one. Lord, in so many ways and in these days, as Judge Washington reminded us, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. And Lord, as we've gathered today as the church in an ecumenical service, uh, coming together as brothers and sisters in Christ from all the walks of Christendom, Lord, we must hold ourselves accountable to do what you called us to do, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Father, you need to continue to work in our hearts. Continue to change us and then work through us to change this world. Lord, may this command be obeyed in the house of the Lord. And Lord, may we be a shining example to the community that we live in today. That there is love, there is hope, there is peace in the house of the Lord. Lord, as people follow you and give their lives to you and trust you and walk with you, that we can put down hate, we can put down differences, we can put down all those things that divide us, 
and look to the one that does unite us. And that is you and our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, as we go our way today, may we be encouraged once again to live differently, to be different, to look for opportunities to love rather than hate, to look for opportunities to serve rather than be served, to look for opportunities to encourage and inspire. Lord, be with us as we go our way, the church, as we go our way into this community, promoting this message of hope and restoration. We love you, Jesus, and until we're together again as the gathered church in your presence, it's in your name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Go with the Lord. God bless you.